Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. All right. I got I got a joke. I couldn't do it at noon. Uh, we had a lot of older folks here, so I don't want to anybody. But uh, I got some a, a good re, uh, a joke about retired people um, that I was going to tell. I got a couple jokes, but that none of them ever work. So. <laughs> Oh. All right. So, uh, my name's Eric Olson. I am with the insurance team, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to tonight's educational event, which is hosted by our True Holistic team and some special guests tonight. So it, it, it's it's exciting. Um, you're going to want to be at your seats when we get started here. So, but uh, we're going to highlight some case studies that demonstrate how our team of experts help a client through our true holistic planning process. So many of you have, have visited client first, I assume. Raise your hand, yep. So you see our, in the lobby, we have our core values on the wall. And they're not just there to take up space on the wall, that's, that's our commitment to our clients. So I'd like to start with highlighting a few of the ones um, that you'll kind of see as we tie it into the, tonight's presentation. But uh, those are gonna be core values number one, number two, and number five. Um, core value number one is that we love our clients. We're fully committed to their financial well-being. So that commitment to your financial well-being is is addressed um, with how you know with how we work with you through core value number two, which is we are fiduciaries for our clients. Believe in the true holistic planning process and adaptive investment management are the only ways to care for our clients' financial health. Um, so this is how we care for you and your, um, you know, financial health. Obviously, we care about you and we love our clients. We we feed you and hope you have a good meal. So, but um, we put these presentations on as well to bring you know awareness and education as things change. Um, so and then we can all come together. So, and the last item is uh, core value number five, which is that we are a family of families. We can recognize the fullness of life beyond the office. So as throughout the presentation, you'll get to know some of our team members a little bit better and their families, um, but that is an, an important um, commitment that we have to our families and, and our clients as well. So, um, and with that, a couple more jokes. So, you know, we're in spring in Wisconsin here, right? So, you know, but then we got snow coming, right? Coming up Friday, Saturday. So. That, that's the joke. It's spring. I'm just kidding. All right. So actually, actually, spring in, in spring, I you know, I it makes me think of one of my favorite movies uh, here in Wisconsin. It makes me think of the movie The Karate Kid. I don't know if you've seen that, Mr. Miyagi, where it was uh, what was it Arnold on on Happy Days, but in the movie he does that wax on wax off thing, and in Wisconsin we it's like coat on coat off, right? Uh, all right, and then, uh, and then, uh, as uh, <laughs> we look, we like to have fun outside the office. We got some fishermen, uh, golfers on our team, and uh, so this thought this was a good one. What's the difference between a golfer and a fisherman? Oh. Anybody? All right. When a golfer lies, they don't have anything to bring home to prove it. <laughs> it's true, right, Brent? Any comment? No. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, on to an introduction here. So uh, we're gonna, like I said, you're gonna meet some of the team throughout the night, but we're gonna start off with Justin, who's the head of our financial planning. He's gonna be our host throughout the night. Um, Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil tonight. So we're gonna tie that in. We're gonna have some fun for you. But um, Justin is head of financial planning over 15 years in this industry. A lot of you know Justin. You know he he brings a lot of. Um, Experience. He's very familiar with the different facets of the financial uh, planning process. So, um, working with, you know, not only working with him but our teams. You know, that's how we help you through your true holistic journey. Um, he's he's also a fisherman, and uh, he never lies. He's got pictures to prove it. So, um, he's also an expert deal shopper, uh, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. So, uh, Brad and I like to do that too, but. You know, Justin is, is very uh, very good at negotiating those deals. And if you have a trailer, he'll be your best friend. <laughs> go help, go get go get stuff for him. So, but um, with that, I'm going to hand it over, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. All right, we'll do. 
Core value number five, updates. As you know, this is our tradition we do at all of our Lunch and Learns, just kind of give you an update on what's going on with our families. Uh, so in the, the middle there, we have a nice uh, Christmas photo we took in our backyard. I believe this was just snowfall we got after Thanksgiving time, uh, which there's, there's, we didn't get a lot of snow this year, right? We got a little bit then, we got the blizzard. But I guess we were fortunate to get a nice family photo with snow. So, um, and then road, going up to the upper left, we got Zev. He's he's here tonight. Uh, this was taken on his seventh birthday. Uh, he's in first grade, um, so he is. He loves school. He's a super fun kid. Uh, he's our youngest. And then rotating down to the bottom, uh, we have uh, my lovely wife uh, and our two daughters. So Michaela Woo! is a sophomore. Um, in the musical at Kettle Moran Lutheran High School, um, Shrek. My wife produced it. She's also in the back with the beautiful curly hair. So she did a great job. All the cast, students, uh, teachers, and faculty members did a great job. So Michaela played the White Rabbit. Our exchange daughter, April, was also in the back tonight. So she was had many different dancing roles. So they both did a great job. So they're both sophomores and enjoy uh, participating uh, in choir and the musical. All right, so now we'll go up to some fishing updates. So the first week of February, I got to take Isaiah and Asher uh, from Upper Red Lake, Minnesota. Uh, they had about a foot and a half ice there. Uh, so it was a great time. We got to do some glamping. You can see that, that glacier ice castle in the background. So we got to stay there for three nights with some friends. Uh, Isaiah is there with a nice walleye. Asher's down here with a nice walleye. Asher's here with a nice big crappie. So we hired a local guy there, a nice young gentleman, and we caught over 100 crappies. All of them were between, in about four hours, we caught over 100, and they were all between 11 and 14 inches. And we kept about 25 and let the rest go. So that was a very memorable day. All right, so as we go into our different topics, some of you who read the invite, you notice we had, I had a quote there from Dr. Phil, and I had a quote uh, from Benjamin Franklin. So if you fail the plan, you're planning to fail, that's Benjamin Franklin. So as we go through the different topics, uh, that's important to uh, remember. Uh, so, but we like, sometimes, Finances, it's a, it's a little dry, um, so we decided to spice it up a little bit. So there's a, there's a little bit of drama in some of our case studies and skits, um, so we hope you enjoy that and it makes it more relevant to your life. So with that, our first topic of estate planning, so I'm going to introduce Dominique Heber. So she's our client service team lead. Uh, she's very dedicated, working hard every day for our clients processing paperwork, doing phone calls, doing everything we need to do to serve our clients. So with that, I'll let Dominique take uh, you through her core value number five update for her family. Excellent. Thanks, Justin. Um, as I said, I'm Dominique Hepper. I'm the uh, client service team lead. Um, I have two daughters, Kaylin, who's up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, she is 12. Um, she is a gymnast. Um, that picture is showing um, this season um, she swept her her first meet uh, where she took first across all apparatuses, which is pretty awesome. And we are four meets in, and she's almost had a perfect 10 on her floor, so we're hoping state this weekend that we see that perfect 10. So super exciting. Um, my middle, my second, like my youngest daughter is Anna, and she's in the back. Um, she is part of Junior Charter Cheer, and she's in fourth grade and nine years old and almost 10. Birthday, big birthday coming up here. Um, my family and I traveled to Orlando this year uh, for my daughter's gymnastics meet. Um, so that's our family picture together before she met, uh, went on her meet. And then we went to Universal where we got to do Harry Potter World and experience Butterbeer, which is absolutely fabulous. Uh, kind of tastes like cream soda. And then I also am um, uh, lift heavy weights, and I just did a 302-pound deadlift, so just PR dead. So it was pretty exciting. A little bit of all me. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Don. 
So as we enter our the do's and don'ts of estate planning, I'll give a little introduction to our case study and our skit. So in our first case study, Dom is playing herself as client's uh, client service team lead. Katie is playing a different Katie, not Katie married to Joe, Katie married to Bill. And Emily's playing her daughter, Emily, not the Emily we know. So we had a little bit of fun with some of the characters. This case, Bill has passed away and Bill had 18 hidden stock certificates uh, that were valued at more than $900,000. His wife, Katie, didn't know about these stock certificates, but she discovered them while cleaning the attic after he passed away. Emily, her daughter, knew about the stocks and insisted that, he, that her dad wanted the stocks to go to her, but she has no proof or documentation of this. There's no beneficiaries listed on the accounts. They're still in Bill's name. Uh, so let's see how the family navigates uh, the situation. So we are entering the scene of Emily and Katie discussing the stock certificates. Discussing or arguing? So, Dr. Phil, what my mother doesn't know is that my dad wanted me to have the money. He wanted me to start my own art business, which you have never supported, so he didn't tell you about it. That is true, daughter. He never told me about the money, but he told me plenty of times that he is worried about you throwing your future away on something that is never going to be successful, and it's never going to amount to anything. I don't also believe that he ever even told you about this. This was Dad's choice to make, not yours, and he didn't tell you about it because he didn't trust you with that amount of money. Your father was the kindest man I have ever known. He didn't want to burden me with all of this. He always took care of all of our finances, and he thought he had more time. I guess we'll just have to let our trusted financial team figure out all of this mess. <laughs> okay, so after that conversation... Katie decides to call Dominique for at client first and have her help her through this, this situation. Ring, ring, ring. <laughs> Hello, this is Dominique from client first. How can I help you? Hi, Dominique. This is Katie Smith, and I regret to inform you that our beloved Bill has passed away. And while I was cleaning the attic, I found 18 hidden stocks totaling $900,000, and I just don't know what to do. Well, first off, I'm really sorry to hear about Bill. He was such a great man. Well, um, do you know if there's any beneficiaries listed or anything? You know, do you have any details regarding these computer stocks? Unfortunately, I don't see any beneficiaries listed on any of the stocks. Well, my suggestion is why don't we give computer share a call? You have time for that? Ring-a-ling-a-ling. <laughs> Hello, Brad. This is... <clears throat> Hello, Brad from Computer Share. How may I help you? Hello, Brad. This is Dominique calling from Client First. Um, I have um, Katie Smith on the phone, and I forgot to inform you that her husband, Bill, has passed away, and he holds some shares with you, and we need to uh, see what we can do about that. Well, I'm really sorry for your loss, Katie. Um, but before we can go forward and talk to Dominique, I'm going to need to have you uh, verify your identity and allow um, Dominique to speak on your behalf. Yes, this is Katie Smith, and I allow Dominique to speak on my behalf. And our account number is 55738, and my Social Security number is 12345678989. Scam. Thank you for the verification. <clears throat> so um, after looking in the account, it does appear that uh, Bill did have shares of stock here at Computer Share. However, there are no beneficiaries listed. So in order to have them be in your name, I'm going to need some proof. And we are probably going to have to go through a probate process to um, reconcile uh, all of this information. 
Um, I do have a few forms I can send over. That would be great, Brad, if you could go ahead and send those forms over. And I think that we can go ahead and potentially bypass the probate if we do um, the letter of domicile. Well, that is um, a, a chance that we can make that happen. I would say gather up that paperwork. Um, I would need a death certificate. I need a, a driver's license. I need a marriage certificate to prove that both of you are married and a, um, and a and trust documents or something that proves that there is ownership of, of the assets. Excellent, Brad. We'll be in touch. I will get you all those forms. Katie, I spoke, as we just got off the phone with Computer Share, we do need to uh, submit all those paperwork. Uh, gratefully, we had all that stuff, so let's go ahead and give them a call back and let them know that we submitted everything. Ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Hello, this is Brad from Computer Share. How may I help you? <laughs> Hi, Brad. This is Dominique calling from Client First with Katie Smith. Regards to Bill Smith's Computer Share that we sent in the paperwork for last week. Yeah, let me dig it up. Oh. Looks like it's in my not in good order area. <laughs> when did you say you submitted this? We submitted it a week ago. I actually did speak with you, and you I submitted all the required paperwork that you said that needed to be submitted. Interesting. Let me take a look. So what I'm seeing here is that we're missing the medallion stamp guarantee. Um, I don't know that you told me that the stock's uh, value was over the $250,000 threshold, but I do require a medallion stamp guarantee. That you can get through any financial institution where you have an account, or we at ComputerShare offer it for just the small amount of $2,000. $2,000? <laughs> $2, I'm not paying you people $2,000 to give me my money. It's okay, Katie. I have this figured out for you. We can, unfortunately, you own the stock, so you should know how much they are worth, and you should have known what kind of paperwork and what kind of stamps that we needed when we called you the first time. So since we work with Charles Schwab, and she's already a client, we can go ahead and submit the paperwork through Charles Schwab and submit the medallion for you to make sure we get that taken care of. We'll be in touch. Katie, we'll go ahead and get that medallion. I'll take care of that for you, and then we'll get that taken care of. Don't worry about that $2,000. Ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a Good evening. This is Brad from ComputerShare. How may I help you? Hi, Brad. This is Dominique calling from Client First with Katie Smith on the phone calling regards to Bill's death claim. Ah, uh, yes, the death claim. So I looked at my files, and it does appear that all of the paperwork is in good order. Case is resolved, and I'll be transferring that share of, those shares of stock over to, you, to the account of Charles Schwab. Congratulations, Katie. I'm so glad we were able to take care of all that for you. All right, to summarize, thank you. So you should always list beneficiaries on accounts. Uh, transfer on death is a potential beneficiary designation. You should list primary and contingent. IRA should have beneficiaries. Uh, taxable accounts, bank accounts, most likely you should have the trust listed as beneficiary. Home should be titled in your trust. All of this back and forth, paperwork, extra time, uh, headaches, um, stress could have been avoided if beneficiaries would have been listed in the first place on all those stock certificates. So always remember on all of your accounts. You have to name it so you can claim it. Which, <laughs> which is life law number 10 of Dr. Phil. We just discovered that this morning. So thank you, team. And just to give you a little timeline, that case was about a year and a half long. That's how long it took to get all that paperwork cleared up. That whole scenario did not address the initial claim of the daughter and the and the and the wife. Who did the money go to? I think that's what he's asking. Is that what you're asking? Well, does it just follow the normal legal uh uh, flow of money, uh, spouse, children, yes, brothers, sisters. That no, no go to the spouse. Yeah, daughter had no claim to it. Except. Emily made money to kill her mother. All right. <laughs> That's the next. All right, I'll welcome up, Cade. That's awesome. As a client planning specialist, uh, Cade's been with us for about three years. Uh, he went to University of Missouri 
um, majored in financial planning. He's doing a great job. All of our plan our clients love him. Um, and he is going to walk through some Social Security uh, case studies for us today. So he's going to give core value number five update for him. All right. Well, it's uh, it's tough to up that, so I'll do my best, and hopefully my acting abilities are just as good as that. Um, so a little up life update from the past few months that we haven't been up here to speak since October or November, so this is just what's been going on. Um, first picture I have up here on the left is me and my beautiful girlfriend, Gracie. She is sitting there in the back. This is our first time at one of these, so um, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope I can impress her enough and as much as I want to impress you guys. So that was at her family's Thanksgiving, um, so I had met her parents and her brother and whatnot, but this was my first time officially meeting her full extended family, so you can only tell how nervous I was for that. But after a couple spotted cows, the karaoke did come out, and I think I did a pretty good job. So that went well. The uh, middle picture that we have here, this is me and a few of my college buddies at the University of Missouri. Um, we got the opportunity to go down there. Um, I believe it was in November as well, um, to go down there. Florida was playing at Missouri for a football game. And, um, of course, the one year that I'm not there, they're really good. So we had to get down there for a game. Um, so that's Andy on the left, Trent in the middle, and then Marty right to the left of me. So we had a good time down there. My last picture on the right is this is Gracie and I again at the Packer game when the Chiefs played the Packers. Um, so that was a really good game to go to. It's not a real Packer game if it's not negative degree weather. And Gracie was, uh, she'd love to experience that. Um, I definitely experienced, I love the game a little bit more than her because that was when we did um, knock off the defending champs and now the uh, repeating champs. So had to rub that in her face a little bit. But So that's just what's been going on with me. So I'll give a little intro to you to our social security planning. So we have Kate playing himself, Brad playing Bill, and Katie playing Katie. <laughs> Katie married to Bill. Again, Katie not married to Joe. All right, so they are both about to retire and they're thinking they should just claim social security right away, right out of the gates. They've heard that Social Security trust fund could be depleted in as early as 2033, so they just want to take their money and run. Uh, some of their friends have turned on Social Security right away. So we're going to walk through their individual case study and figure out what's in their best interest based on uh, their situation and their finances. All right. So just like Justin mentioned, we have Katie playing Katie and then Brad playing Bill. So... When we look at Social Security, there are a bunch of different factors that we need to look at. So to keep it simple, they're both 61 and on the verge of retiring next year. So that's the first point that's not always going to happen is where we have two people at the same age. So that's the first factor. The other factors is we have um, different retirement assets, expenses, investment performance, and timing. So before we go into everything, these are all factors that can play and adjust of when we want to plan for Social Security. So, Bill, what are your thoughts on Social Security? Well, Kate, uh, having trouble uh, trusting the government, I believe my best option is for Social Security to be taken right away next year. Um, I know it's a lower amount, but I can't wait any longer, and I really don't think there's going to be any money left. All right. Well, Brad, this, these are common concerns. Um, Katie, what do you have to say? Well, I also believe we should turn on Social Security right away because all my friends did, and they say it's amazing. And I really feel like we need to at least get some consistent monthly income so I can go shopping. <laughs> all right. Well, both very valid concerns. Um, I work with many people who have very similar concerns to this. Um, so let's dive deeper into the situation and kind of see the importance of Social Security planning. So I will start with a few assumptions that we need to make. And obviously, every situation is different, and all of these assumptions can change. My first assumption that we're going to make is our clients have a total retirement assets of 275000 
This is including 401ks, IRAs, or any other investment vehicles. And obviously, things can change if we have um, post-tax accounts like brokerage account or Roth IRA where we're seeing tax-free growth as well. The second point or assumption that we can make is our monthly expenses equal $4,000 or $48,000 per year after taxes. And then we have our third assumption, our clients have a life expectancy of 90 years old with a short life of 80 and a long life of 100. Obviously, life expectancy is tough to point out, but this is what we're going to go with for the presentation's sake. And then um, the fourth, fourth point we have, again, our clients will both retire at age 62. Our husband's primary insurance amount is 2950 So this primary insurance amount, whenever we look at our statements, we can see our full, retire full retirement age at 67. So that's where we're seeing that full amount. Uh, we can take it earlier, 62 being the first year that we can, can take it, but that being the lowest amount. The last year we can take it is 70, and that being the higher amount. So we'll kind of see and how we can adjust things to get a good plan going forward. And again, um, Katie, or the wife's primary insur insurance amount, is a little bit lower at 2,450. When we plug these numbers in, we can see our both of our strategies side by side. The top strategy is what um, Bill and Katie suggest taking it right at age 62. The numbers that I wanna point out are in the details section. When we turn those on at age 62, those are gonna be our lower amounts. The husband at 2,077 per month, and then the wife at 1,725. So when we look back at our expense amount of 4,000, we can see when those numbers add up, that is obviously less than 4,000, so we're kind of hitting a shortfall there. If we do adjust our numbers, we like to take the lower amount at age 62, and then the higher amount where we can see bills or the husbands right there at 3,658 per month. That gets us over our $4,000 expense threshold. So if we move on to our next slide, this is a software that we commonly use during our planning process. This is our retire up income projector. This shows us exactly our overall financial health as we look towards retirement. So in the green, the green is our protected income. Anything like salary or any, um, when we reference protecting our protected income, that's what we look at for social security. So when we see that green throughout, that is our social security getting a slight increase, but it's not enough to beat inflation. The yellow is our non-protected income, or anything that we have to tap into, like our IRAs or 401ks. When we do that in our early strategy, we can see a pretty big shortfall come around the age of 85. And it may not look like a lot, or we may be thinking, hey, I might not be around till age 85, but we have to plan for that, and we have to have um, um, a good strategy going forward. So if we look at the red, that's a shortfall about 40 to 50,000. If we look at our expert plan right below that, that's our 6270 plan, we can see our, um, our salary amounts drop off right here. That's when we have to turn on or tap into our 401k IRA retirement assets right away. When we do that, we can see a smaller social security amount until age 70 when Bill turns that on, and that's when we get our full, um, our full social security amount at that higher amount as well. So that gets, gets us a lot further. We do see a little bit of shortfall there at the end, but right there, that's only about maybe $10,000 of shortfall. And it also buys us a few years of extra time. So just doing something simple like this of determining when to turn on Social Security can not only save us a, a, a few years of expense planning, but a lot more in um, uh, less shortfall there at the end. So after looking at this, you now have both a good understanding of the importance of planning. Yeah, thank you, Cade, for pointing that out. I definitely don't like the upper slide with the red. Um, I think now we're uh, going to have a, a better plan going forward. I also feel a lot more confident about our plan, and I'm so glad we listened to the trusted advice of our financial planner. <laughs> Okay, to summarize, Kate suggested a mix 
of early and late claiming Social Security. He uh, labeled it, came up with the new name, the 6270 method. This happened to work uh, in Bill and Katie's situation. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, when we're doing planning with clients, we're going to look to see what makes sense in your situation. Uh, so it's just really important to take uh, a really thoughtful approach. Most people don't have pensions anymore, so Social Security is uh, like the household pension. So it's very important to plan. So to I think a really good way to summarize uh, some of this planning advice is another quote and word of wisdom from Dr. Phil. If you don't have a plan, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and before you know it, you're looking back saying, I should have had a plan. <laughs> All right, thank you team for that. One thing that you guys didn't address is their concern that there's not gonna be any money in social security when I get to that issue. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did mention that in the beginning. So a base, I can give you a little bit more information. So the current studies is the social security trust fund is solvent until 2033. That is not where most of Social Security is funded from. Most of it is covered off of current taxes that current workers are paying. It was 6.2 6 for employer, 6.2 for employee. So that is where most of it is funded from. So if, they, if the Social Security um, fund was exhausted, then all your benefits would drop theoretically to 76% of what they were after 2033. If it's pro rata, based on re whatever your benefit was, that would not impact your decision of whether you claimed it at 70 or 62, because it's pro rata for whatever amount. So that's if they do nothing, most likely, they're gonna increase taxes and pass along that burden to younger generations. That's not your problem. So I would take what's most advantageous for your situation. What is pro rata? I pro, think you're using uh, a sure. shortened term that I, I don't know what it means. So pro rata just means like if they're going to pay, if I owe you, if they, if Social Security, if you're supposed to get $1,000 a month, pro rata, and they say you're going to pay 25 less, 25% less, they pay $750. If your benefit was $2,000 a month, 25% deduction pro rata would be 1500 So just the same proportion. Now we're moving on. So Chris Walla has been with us a long time, long time. So he's an insurance specialist and a world-class bear hugger. That's true. Uh, so he helps uh, clients with home and auto, a lot on the individual and Medicare insurance side. Um, so he's gonna give a little core value five update on his family. And then we're gonna get going on our Medicare um, case. Sounds good. Who's excited to be here tonight? Yeah. All right. That's more convincing than the annuity then, so I'm proud of you guys. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, core value five. <clears throat> My family's been pretty busy this season. We, we kind of have uh, two different main directions that we've been going as a family. We have two boys left in the house. Um, a youngest son, Lev, he's a junior at Homestead. He is a t very talented musician. He plays the cello and piano. Um, he is involved in uh, the Homestead Orchestra, and um, lately we've been doing a lot of concerts and solo ensembles, and in fact on Friday he is leaving for Germany to play four concerts in Bavaria, so he's going to have a great time doing that. Um, my family really enjoys going and watching him. I'm not very musically inclined, but that's, that's all right. Um, I get away with it on my good looks. So, um, and then uh, I have a son that's a senior, Jack, at Westman West. He's been playing basketball. He just got done with the season. They had a really good season. Um, he was named a captain, and uh, honorable mention North Shore Conference uh, for basketball. He is uh, committed to playing at Concordia Hoops. So we're we're pretty excited for that. So you can kind of see the two different things. We're in two different directions most of this winter. But uh, the main consistent thing is uh, I heard their dad is very intelligent and he's very good looking. And if you have a question about that, you can ask their mom. So I'm going to set the stage here. So Medicare choices and decision. Who knows what is best for Brad? Brad is playing himself. 
at age 64 in nine months. I will be playing Brad's older brother, Ron, at age 75. I've been on Medicare since 65. Dominique is playing Brad's sister, Janet, who is age 68 and been on Medicare since age 65. And Cade will be playing a slick Medicare salesman named Tony. And Chris will be playing himself as well. So Brad has received his red, white, and blue Medicare card in the mail. There it is. And, and just piles of Medicare marketing materials, things that look like they came from the government. Medicare, say, time sensitive, you better reply. Otherwise, we're going to mess up your credit or take your home or something. So there's, if, if you're of Medicare age... You, I'm sure you remember the six months leading up to your 65th birthday and all the junk mail you, you got. Um, so he's not sure what to do. So we will begin. Chris now swap spots for a couple seconds. Brad has decided to talk to his family first. So Brad and I are golfing together. So thanks for taking the time to golf, Brad. Uh, we haven't been out for a while and, uh, it's just nice to be out with you. Yeah, it's great. I'm, uh, you know, starting to get a couple of thoughts about Medicare. Well, I've been on Medicare a long time. I'm your older brother, and I know it's best. We know older brothers always know more than your younger brothers. And you should, you definitely should get a supplement like I did. I pay three hundred dollars a month. I don't have to worry about doctor's bills. I signed up for senior care. I don't take any prescriptions. Uh, I don't really believe in prescriptions. I don't like doctors. I don't really go to them. But if I ever had to go, I wouldn't have to pay anything. So it's that's really what you, you should do. Wow. That seems like a great plan. Is that working for you? Oh, it's working great. Uh, it, you really need to listen to me on this. I mean... It took you six years of slicing the ball, and you finally listened to my guidance, and now you're a lot better golfer than you used to be. I mean, maybe someday you'll be as good as a golfer as me, Brad. <laughs> All right. A week later, Brad sees his sister Janet at a graduation party, and they start talking Medicare. Thanks, Brad, for coming to the graduation party. Here, you have some questions about Medicare. Yeah, what do you know? Uh, Ron was telling me all about his supplement plan, but I don't know if that's the right move for me or not. I just, I got this card and I have so many questions. Well, let me tell you, I love my Medicare Advantage plan. It's free, and who doesn't love free? And the benefits, let me tell you. I get to go to the YMC free, and wow, you could really use it too. So I think you should get the free plan. And let me tell you, even better, look at this smile. The dental plan, oh, jeez, it's so good. Wait. Do you say no cost and you get the YMCA? That's Ron told me I had to pay three hundred dollars a month. Wait a minute, I I'm so confused. Brad doesn't really trust the advice of either of his siblings, and <laughs> it's a good reason not to talk to him and to avoid him. So um, he decides he's not going to take their advice, uh, but he does decide to respond to one of these mailers he got and puts down his his email, and his cell phone number. So, so now he's getting spammed three to four times a day. And one day he accidentally answers the phone because it says it's from a local number in Jackson. And so he answers it. And on the other line is Tony, the Medicare salesman. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, this is Brad. Hey, this is Tony from Midwest Senior Select. I heard we had some um, thoughts on Medicare. I just wanted to see where I could help you with. You know, I am an expert. So, Brad, what do you think about setting up a quick meeting? Um, I'll come over maybe next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, you said you're a Medicare expert, uh, and you want to come to my house, and I don't have to beat you anywhere? Yeah, Brad, I definitely see some different ways that we could help you out. And like I said, I am the expert. Well, that seems uh, pretty good. I mean, I'm good getting some advice from my siblings, but I'm not sure what to do. Would you be able to compare and contrast the plans for me? 100%. I could always help. All right. So tr transition to next Tuesday, 9 a.m., Brad's Kitchen 
they're sitting at Brad's kitchen table. All right, Brad. So I know we just wanted to talk about Medicare, but I found some other different ways that we could help you out. Um, first of all, I have this premium advantage, um, zero premium Medicare Advantage plan for you. Um, so do you have a history of cancer in your family? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we should add on that cancer insurance policy for you. Um, do you plan on accidentally dying anytime soon? Uh, anytime soon. Well, that's why they call it an accident, so we'll probably add on the accidental death plan. Um, as well as this membership plan, just in case we lose an arm or leg. Um, another thing that we could add is our also, I know, I don't want to make assumptions, but I'm guessing you do love your wife and want her to have a good rest of her life? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, we should probably add on this final expense life insurance policy as well, you know, just to make sure that you have enough and you're covered. So how does that sound? Wow, you've really thrown a lot at me. I don't know. I mean, how much does this all add up to? It, it, it seems like a lot. There's a lot of policies here. Yeah, Brad, the price might be a little steep, but let me tell you, it's to die for. <laughs> you know, I think it, I really appreciate your time, but I'm not sure I can make a decision yet. I still feel like there's just too many things coming at me, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. Is it, is it possible I can get back to you next week? Yeah, Brad, I think that is possible. I, I, you might be making a small mistake here, but don't worry, I'll stay in touch. All right, so now Brad is even more stressed out than when he started this process. Uh, so he's decided to call and make an appointment with his trusted insurance specialist, Chris, and well, let's see what Chris recommends. Hi, Brad, how are you doing? You look a little stressed. Hey, Chris. Uh, yeah, ever since I got this card in the mail, I've been getting nothing but unsolicited advice. Sounds like uh, everybody else that has contacted me about this. Are you, are you doing okay? Are you a little over the top, or what's happening? Uh, it's really affecting my golf game, so I'd really like to get this past me. Well, I heard that you weren't that good before. So. <laughs> but anyways, that was a joke. But anyways, let's get a couple of pieces of information for you. Um, there's a lot of different trains of thought on this. Not every situation is the same. Um, we'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis. A couple of things that we're looking for. Uh, what health care systems do you see? What doctors do you see? Uh, compile a drug list for us, and we can review the costs of them depending on the plan that we look at. Um, a lot of these plans are dictated by the county you, you live in. Um, and then also um, different benefits that might be added to it to see what's important to you. Okay. Well, I am in the freighter network because uh, my li lovely wife works in that network. Yeah, I don't really go to the doctor that often. Medications, I try and stay away from them. I'm a little afraid of drugs myself. I can't swallow the pills, so <laughs> it's never going to happen. But, um, yeah, so did I answer all the right questions so far? Definitely. Do you, do you plan on... Do you plan on doing any traveling or anything out of state? I mean, I do travel out of state often. Sounds good. Well, we'll factor all those things into um, different options for you. We're, we're, we're definitely not in the business of twisting arms, so uh, we'll present a couple of different options for you, and you can see where you want to go from there. What can you tell me about this YMCA? My sister was telling me I don't look so fit and trim anymore. <laughs> Well, Brad, um, she's not lying. I looked at you. You didn't look that fit either, but uh, I am a world-class bear hugger. I felt it as well. All right, thanks for giving Brad at age 64, nine months, great advice on Medicare. Not a high-pressure sales, just walking through what's in his best interest. So I think to, to sum up um, the Medicare uh, planning and advice, we'll have another quote and word of wisdom from Dr. Phil. You can put feathers on a dog, but that don't make it a chicken. <laughs> Has nothing to do with Medicare. Not Dr. Phil, but... Okay, we're going to transition to our last case study. Uh, back to Eric Olson, insurance team lead and manager. So uh, Eric has been doing a great job uh, leading our property and casualty which home and auto business insurance and uh, he has several years experience in the business and uh, he's been doing a great job for our clients so looks like he's changing out a battery 
and it'll be ready to rock. All right, cor core value number five update for Eric. All right, thanks, Justin. Um, yeah, I got some pictures up here of the family. In the middle, those are my kids, uh, Elizabeth or Ellie. I, I always use their full name, but I should say Elizabeth or Ellie. Um, Ellie works at Client First right now during tax season. You might have seen her up at the front desk or talk to her on the phone. Um, Jackie is in the middle. She's down in uh, Kentucky, Tennessee area. She goes to Lincoln Memorial University right now, and it's right in the Cumberland Gap. So she uh, she's living down there, and we visit her quite a bit. It's that picture there. And then my son Sam, who's seventh grade, and 13 years old, he is taller than both of them now, but uh, still a lot younger. And, and yeah, I should say Jackie's 21, Ellie's 18. So she just graduated from Living Word. Uh, the picture on the bottom right, that was her senior day, senior parents' day. She was cap or uh, not captain, uh, manager on the football team. So she helped out with the football team. And then that's Jackie. She did a... Uh, uh, with her boyfriend last year, they took three weeks and traveled and did some hiking. Um, he has a lot of experience doing hiking, and uh, they went out to our west in uh, Arizona. So she got to do that, and I, I told her, I said, you got to do it now because when you're uh, older, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to just take off three weeks. So it was cool that she did that. Um, Ellie is uh, kayaking there, um, so we, we enjoy kayaking as a family. And then uh, we got my son Sam at the top, so we, one of our visits down to Tennessee, we did Dollywood. Uh, we've been con contemplating a season pass because we go so, so much now, but we got to do that uh, last fall. And then that's him uh, blocking a basketball shot earlier this year. Um, so he's, he's just trying to grow a few more inches so he can dunk. Um, and then on the far right top, those are the, the dogs. Uh, Lucy's our black lab, and then we got Daisy is our, uh, we don't know the exact mix, but she's she's a little, she's cute. <laughs> Dogs, not chickens? Not chickens, yeah. No feathers. All right. In our property casualty home and auto case study, uh, we have Eric playing himself, <laughs> and we have Chris playing Brad Drager, current day Brad Drager. And he is stressing out about insurance premiums and uh, trying to navigate that. Hey, Brad. It's nice to meet you. I'm Eric. Hey, Eric. How you doing? How you Good. Doing? Good. How's your mic working? <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> get it well, it's nice to meet you. Yep. You, uh, hang on a second. My, my Tesla is calling my phone. I think it misses me. It wants to do a light show. Uh, hang on. Okay. Wow, you got a Tesla? Oh, well, you should know you're the insurance agent. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, those are awesome. Crazy. Um, well, yeah, well, thank you for coming to Client First, and, and I wanted to introduce myself and our team. We're, so at Client First, we have an a insurance agency, independent agency, right in-house. We have over 20 carriers that we work with, and we're really here as your expert when it comes to insurance to help you navigate and answer questions that you might have. So um, any Concerns that you have currently? Yeah, oh boy, I just can't believe this. My my rates are going through the roof, and ah, I'm not paying that stuff. I'm really not paying that stuff. I just I've been paying all these years. The premiums high, and I uh, don't make any claims. I just I can't take it anymore. This is stressing me out, and it, it's affecting my golf game. My brother says I'm horrible at it, but you know we'll just have to deal with him later. Well, I hear that. I, you know, we can't help you with your golf game, but uh, good luck there. But we can definitely help with your insurance. Um, and, and, and yeah, you know, we our planning team shared some of the information already. Understand that you, uh, we're, you have a net worth of over uh, one and a half million, and you got some teenagers at home and some vehicles and a home to, that you insure. Um, and yeah, the, you mentioned that increase. It's yeah, it's tough right now. We're, it's a, it's a crazy time in the insurance market, but um, we have a, a good strategy that we can go through and, and try to help you out. Um, and then I, I know you're looking to, to save money and, and maybe lower limits, things like that. So. Save, saving money, that's an understatement. I, just, I can't take it anymore. I'm so stressed that I'm gaining weight. My sister says I'm not in shape anymore. I'm going to get a different gym membership or something. 
Um, but what I'm really looking for is uh, I want to make some drastic moves. I want I want you to quote state minimums for me. I, I've been paying all these high um, coverage amounts, and now I just want state minimums. I want to reduce my costs as much as possible. This is driving me nuts. All right. Well, I, I understand that frustration. Um, so let's let's kind of take a look at what you have. One of the things that we as an agency like to have our clients do is, or we like to go through is help you understand what you're paying for. Okay. Cause you know, please do, please do. Cause I don't get it right now. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and that's the first part because there, there are a lot of costs that go up and you don't really always know why. Right. Um, but there's, there's a important reason you have insurance. So like I said, in the beginning, you know, we, we're part of your financial plan. We're the true holistic, uh, the true holistic process. And, you know, our planning team works hard to make sure that your money that you're putting away is growing for you so you can have it at retirement. Um, insurance is a key piece to that, though, because if something major happens, you could be out, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So um, before we pro- provide a recommendation, let's let's consider what's at risk. OK, so, you know, a comp, we have lots of fun examples with insurance, um, but a, a common one, you know, that we can probably all may have gone through or could relate to would be an auto accident and, and, you know, one that you're at fault. So, um, you ever heard of, uh, you know, that commercial one call that's all. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Well, as annoying as that is, there's, there's a reason you see those a lot because in an auto accident, there's a lot of costs that can come into play. So, um, you have medical bills, you have your legal costs, you could have lost wages. If you, you know, the person that's injured can't work anymore, um, or if, if even worse, there's going to be a lifestyle change, you know, pain and suffering, you know, years of, of um, years ahead of them that they have to account for. So the cost can really add up, and insurance is there to pro- to provide you coverage that, uh, you know, so it doesn't touch your financial assets. You know, you want it to come out of insurance, but it's there to be that, that layer of protection, okay? So that's the first thing we want to help you understand. Um, with you know, we've we've looked through some of the policies that you have now, so your limits aren't aren't far off. But the first thing we want to do is make sure that you're protected, and then find out how we can save some costs. So, um, but you know, that that would be the first thing to understand is what what's at stake. So, um, if, if if we're you know looking at that, I guess the next step would be, you know, based on what we know about you, um, a good plan if you're trying to save money uh, that we would recommend is and we can work with you you know however whatever works best for you but really with pricing you know you really you gotta shop it around you know there's um the first step is let's see what's out there on the market because the pricing may be what it is and then we gotta work from there um but there may be some options to not only maintain or or increase your coverage but um save some money at the same time so that that would be step one um i know how do you feel about that uh, that that sounds fair. Um, I'm all about finding a different carrier. Um, the current one's been taking my premium for how long? I'm not too happy about that. Sure. Yeah. And and it, and you know sometimes it's it's getting some education around what you're paying for, but also seeing what's out there that that helps you understand. Okay, maybe I'm. It's it's within what the market's at. But the other thing that we'll do too. So like in your case. The, we definitely would not want to recommend just dropping down your limits because that put that exposes you um, with the net worth you have. I don't know about that. I mean, I I kind of really want to save some money. Sure, sure. And there's other ways that we can do that. Um, one of the, you know one option is I noticed on your auto policy you got like a five hundred dollar deductible right now. Your home is at a thousand, and you know knowing your net worth, we would ask, hey, you know. Could you afford to pay a little bit more if it saves you some money? What are your thoughts on that? Sell me on that, would you? So, if you have a claim tomorrow and you have a five hundred dollar deductible, okay, and say your it's a, your car uh, damage is seven hundred fifty dollars, would you make that claim? Pay the five hundred to get two hundred fifty dollars back. Should I make that claim? That, well, that's up to you. But you want to think of it that way because nowadays, what we tell people nowadays is anytime you use your insurance or even think about using it, in some cases, it can be used against you later. So that means even higher rates. So 
unfortunately, some of the things you need to decide is, you know, what can what can you or are you willing to pay in, uh, so that you, you know, aren't increasing your rates due to your actions. Gotcha. Okay, so, but, there, but besides the, dedu the, de the deductibles, part of our process would be going through and looking what other options are out there as well as going through, um, we have a lot of carriers now that allow you to pick your coverages. So you can really dial in what's important to you, how you're gonna use it, based on some new, new knowledge that we shared with you. Um, so a lot of cases, you know, we can find, you know, an option that not only saves you money, but puts you in a better spot coverage-wise. Sounds good, but we'll explain a little bit more on, on umbrella coverage. And so, I yeah. Perfect. So the umbrella, so insurance in general is there to keep you whole. You know, if something happens, your house has a fire or your car, you know, gets damaged, you want to put it back together so that you can move on with your life. Okay. So, um, so you can do that to a point with insurance. Um, but, you know, if there's a major claim where someone has, you know, extensive injuries and things like that, what the umbrella does is it can cover above and beyond your auto and home policy or other policies that you have and add an extra layer of protection. They usually start at $1 million of coverage. So we include that amount in your overall liability coverage, which in your case would put you right at a one-to-one -one ratio of 1.5 million based on our recommendations. So, uh, but the, the umbrella itself is often cheaper or um, it, it's a little, it's, a, it's more cost effective to have that than to raise limits on some of the other policies or some of those policies you can't go up to the limits we're recommending. So most, most are capped at a million. So in order to get you to 1.5, we're going to need to do the umbrella policy. Gotcha. Well, this didn't sound like that arm twisting like that slick uh, Medicare salesman, Tony. Um, there's no cancer policy or anything like that with this? No, no, we we will, uh, this is free advice, you know, as part of your true holistic plan, this is advice that you can use and work with us, or if you have an agent that's doing a great job for you, you can go back to them and, and uh, you know, see, see what they ha have to offer, but yes, it's... So if I do get competitive quotes from you and I don't decide to go with you, I could use your recommendations to go back to my previous agent and ask him why he didn't tell me the correct things? You sure can, yeah. Yep, whatever works out best for you, but we're here to help. We we have a lot of clients that have a good relationship with their agent, and we're a great sounding board for those clients. But, um, you know, the advice is free, and if you want to come on over, we're happy to have you. Excellent, thank you. Well, it sounds like you're a, a decent person to work with, and you're good looking. Well, thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for that. It sounds like Brad was a little confused there that, you know, he had, he wanted just to go to minimum limits and, you know, he wants minimum limits, doesn't want to pay a lot, but if he had a claim, he'd want to be made whole. So I think he was a little bit confused on being properly covered versus just paying the least amount. So, you know, you don't always have what you think you have. So with that, we'll close it out with uh, our last quote and words of wisdom. Uh, not from Dr. Phil, but from Paul Zarling, who's not here tonight. But Paul always likes to say, uh, you got a, a beef patty over here, and, and you got a bun and a piece of cheese. But that doesn't make it a cheeseburger. All right. Thank you for uh, being here tonight and uh, learning some and putting up with... Uh, Eric and my bad jokes and if you haven't already uh, please provide some feedback for us and give it to a team member and back and then some scheduling reminders next month we've got David and Kevin from the adaptive team here to uh, give us our first quarter and uh, markets insight uh, from the adaptive team so that will be that is the third Wednesday of April pretty sure I got that right at noon and 6 30. And then if you're not currently a planning client, uh, you can definitely call and talk to Sarah or Heather or anyone else at the office and schedule, schedule a no-fee initial consultation. Uh, as uh, we've pointed out several times, we're not a high-pressure firm, so we do those meetings. We don't do any planning at those meetings. It's just an opportunity for us to learn more about you and uh, uh, figure out what type of planning you may need to do. And then we go over the planning process and cost structure if you decide to go forward. So 
thank you again for coming out tonight, and we'll all be around here for a little bit if you have any questions. Thanks much. Woo-hoo!